God. Tonight, you execute your assignments. Tonight, for 48 minutes, we dictate to them how the game is going to go. No different last week, man. Energy, enthusiasm, and we're dictating what's happening. Everybody clear on that? Yes, sir. All right, if something bad happens, move on. Just like Coach Reed just said, it works. We're going to take it. We respect it. All right, we're dictating for 48 minutes. Everybody clear on that? Yes, sir. Have fun, bring energy, you do your job, do your job, do your job, we all do our job. Yes. Tell the party out. You got me? Yes, sir. Have some fun. Let's have some fun. Here we go. <laughs> happening <laughs> oh this light thanks <laughs> making your dreams come true i sure am <laughs> What inspired me to play football was when I was in fourth grade, I had a cousin who played here named Irvin, and I got to watch their senior night, even though they played like Zionsville back then, and that's who inspired me to play football. I'd say probably Coach Rob. Um, I used to play baseball before I played football. I was on the team with his son, and every day, every time he saw me, every game, is when, when are you gonna play football? When are you gonna play football? You're gonna love it. Eighth grade came, I ended up playing. He was the coach, the rest is history. Definitely my father. I was a big baseball player back in the day. I played football, and he was like, yeah, go try out for the Sixers. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. So that's kind of who really pushed it on me to play. It was my father, which is nice, because I mean, oh, I actually want to be here if you wouldn't have done it, so. Uh, my uncle, back when I was little, I went to his college games, I watched him. He really inspired me to um, hop on the field and play. Uh, definitely my brothers. I watched them play football when I couldn't, so I was too young. I just couldn't get in the pads and started hitting. Saw that when I was young. I loved that. Probably my dad, since he played college ball, stuff like that. I moved out here my sophomore year, and Coach Shanley talked to me right away about it and just like you know told me what's up, like what's going on with this football program and. I seen just how much of like a family it was and it really started interesting me. So I was I just like, you know what, like, this looks like something I'd really like to do. It was probably my dad. Uh, he put me into competitive sports at a young age, so I was playing flag football since I was in probably first and second grade and then eventually into 56 years as a third and fourth grader, so probably my dad. Each year is unique. Um, each senior class is unique. This senior class in particular is, is a group that we saw come up through our junior Bronco program. So we've got to see them as fifth and sixth graders, mostly sixth graders, and come up through Tecumseh and come up through our freshman program. You know, for me personally, I, I think just watching them grow um, as young boys and little little kids and grow into men that faced a great deal of adversity during the season, I, I think it just it, it makes me really, really proud to know that that is going to be taken with them later in life and it's going to help fuel them to be great husbands great fathers and, and successful in whatever career they they pursue so you know it's a group that I feel do, that I do feel close with and, and um, I'm just just excited to see what the future holds for each and every one of them this was a weird year for me so I used to be the quarterback coach so I had a 
a smaller group of kids um, that I was coaching or athletes that I was coaching and so I, it used to be pretty like hands-on and uh, used to have like pretty in-depth relationships with specifically them because I just spent so much time with those guys and so you know coming into this season knew Brady really well knew Lance really well uh, but this year because I didn't have a position group I was able to spend more time with other guys on the team and so I was able to to really bond more I think across the entirety of the offense as well as some of the defensive guys and so I, uh, I feel like I was able to more spread out my impact on the athletes instead of it being more centralized on one position group. I'm, I'm very energetic. I'm sometimes abrasive, but I also have to make sure that the kids know I love them. My relationship with the team, uh, it's, it, it's a family. It was a very positive relationship. I was very fortunate to have a group that was self-motivated and disciplined enough to do the work. So having that group and getting to see Brady perform his throughout his senior year of football, I, I was very fortunate to be a part of. And I'll always remember it as my first year. And I'm, I'm glad I, I couldn't have asked more out of a, a group of quarterbacks and an individual as, as the starting quarterback. For squad six, I mean, it was probably day by day. It was just, they just became my friends. And like, in a sense, that's how I would put it, is they just became mentors, not only for me, but I became mentors for them. And I think that's really what my coaching philosophy is, is just building relationships with young kids. Coach Shanley told me that this is your first year coaching at Jefferson High School. What was that like? Uh, it was different. It was, it was very different from seeing stuff from this point of view. Because as a player, you don't see all the behind the scenes, the work the coaches really do. I mean, from my mindset as a player, I think, you know, managers at all of it, but no coaches do a lot, setting up the headsets, getting stuff like that ready. And it was different because, I'm honestly, it was like a lot of preparation. Like when you play football, you go to practice, it goes, it stays at practice with you. You don't take it home. Well, coaching, it's always with you. Like you get home, you watch film, run out their game, you already prepare for next week and stuff like that is basically what, why it's different. It's very, a lot more tedious, a lot more stressful. But it's it's fun. Game time. Hey, gotta get in the zone real quick. But it's gonna be a movie tonight. <laughs> hey, real quick. You got any words for Devin, who's gonna be on the sidelines? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, first thing I want to ask is how's the hand going? Uh, it feels good. I just can't like twist it and stuff. Like put pressure on it. I I can move all my fingers. I can move my thumb a little bit. I just can't lift anything more than a pound for four months until it gets better. You got any words for the boys tomorrow? Just play hard, kick some ass. <laughs> just hopefully we have a good game, nobody gets injured, and everybody stays healthy. Oh man, hey, I love you, bro. You're my brother. Hey, get them hype. We're gonna need you tonight for sure, man. Devin, I love you. Too. We love you, Devin. My boy. We gotta do this for you. Westside game. Your jerky is like real life. Like, it's some crazy, dude. Like it's crazy. Yeah. For Devin. Yeah. I hope he doesn't break his hand. Honestly, I feel bad for what happened to him. I I've known Devin for about like four or five years now. He's, he's unique. Yes, sir. Jeff and Ann in Shoulder RDP as they perform the West Lafayette School Fight Song, Scott and Gray. Man! I need to hear me. Ready, Devin? Yeah. Uh, what was the most valuable lesson you learned from the first game of the season? <sighs> Respect. Definitely. I feel like we did, we win that game. But I just think we we're going to win. And they have no respect for them. So I feel like, for me personally, it was like respect. We went in thinking big headed, um, just because all the facilities that we have, the big head from, from last year, our season, um, in North Central Conference. I think the most valuable lesson I learned is not to go in with a big head, you know. We underestimated them. We thought, you know, they'd be trash, but they actually showed us up, so, yeah. Don't underestimate your opponents. I feel like we underestimated them, we talked too much trash, and then we got hit in the mouth. I learned that you just gotta keep fighting no matter what. You can't take anything for granted, and you gotta respect the competition, and you gotta respect the game every single time you go out there and play. Nothing's gonna be handed to you.
the play is over. Let's go. We back. It's never over. It's never over, man. Oh, you get the monkey off your back, right? We were hyped. Oh! It was definitely lit. Everybody wanted to play that night. You assume that the first one's gonna be the first game, and so I think that, in my opinion, was our first victory. I think it kind of gave everybody a feeling of relief. It humbled us, you know, and to the fact that where we want to get some McCutcheon and we had a different mindset I think we had previous years. When it comes to the game, you think enough of it, I done it. When it comes to the style, I gotta keep it 100. When it comes to the fakers, they have a tendency of fronting. And when you round action, there's a tendency of stunning. It ain't no accident, I made it out of nothing. Let me speak my facts again. Keep on rapping, it. and if I ever leave, man, I swear I'll be back for real. Um, you got injured during the McCutcheon game. Would you like to explain how that happened and kind of give your thoughts and feelings on that? All right, so. Perfect start of the game. We go out, score first drive. They score again. They score once, and we we're just like, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We come out, boom. Kick off. We get to like the 50. First play, they call that drive. Slant to my side. I run a slant. I beat him. I catch it. I took my foot, plant it in the ground. As soon as I catch it, he grabs my leg. My foot doesn't move. My body moves. I blow out the whole inside of my ankle ending my season. Look, about to motivate. 
Make the stakes higher, take the worst hours Time to pay Piper With a squadron at a swim across the lake of fire Just to add another brick to the empire No outsiders, keep the love tribal Spread them like virus, about to go primal Fans shaking up the stands when they go wild Execution is the plan, we don't hold trials Apply the kind of pressure that could blow spinals So when we finish with them, better check vitals We gon' push it to a level where there's no rivals We don't take L's, we just take titles No days off, ain't no kind of down. breaks Till we on top, ain't no time to waste Yeah, we need it right away, we ain't trying to wait Hold Anybody's it. trying to violate, we annihilate it's Time to show we ain't playing from the gate Dominate, by the best bar, while we elevate Dominate, make a bullshit, make a vibe So one of the speeches he gave this year that I really loved was at Kokomo when he mm. told the kids that you listen to the song uh, I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty. Yeah. And the lyrics in the song, um, it says you can stand me up at the gates of hell and I won't back down. All right. And I, and I thought it was kind of fitting with where we're at right now because obviously one of three is not where we wanted to be. It's not where we envisioned being. Uh, we've had our fair share of adversity, it seems like, a little bit each day. All right. But the, the thing about this group and what's going to define you is how you handle it. Do you keep pressing forward? Do you back down? All right, what do you do? You stand me up at the gates of hell, but I won't back down. All right, adversity staring you dead in the face every single day, man. That's a lesson for life. Okay, life's going to beat you down. All right, let this be a lesson. One and three is a lesson. One and three is a lesson. There's going to be lessons to be learned tonight. It's a great song. <laughs> I won't back down. You can... Stand me up at the gates of hell, and I won't back down. It's a, you know, there's so many takeaways from that song, and that that, that connect to what we endured this year. And it's a, it's not a group that backed down. It's a group that stood up in the face of adversity, and they kept pressing forward. They had grit. that game. <laughs> Definitely as a senior, you realize, you, re you kind of sit there and you realize what family really means. So I know the previous years I wasn't here, so it was like a lot of pressure and hype about Maryville. There were things that were exposed that we need to improve upon. We easily, we had an excuse to be all down in the dumps and sad and feel pity for us, but underclassmen, you know, the seniors were, you know, still hyping around, still jumped, still celebrated big plays we had. And when they put their twos in, you know, we could have shut down, but we were still playing super hard to come back in the game like we had a chance. You know, our, our defense, during the Maryville game, probably played the best 18 minutes of football uh, that I've seen during my time at Jeff. I mean, they played lights out. That's a very talented football team. The lesson was kind of that, although that didn't go in our favor, you know, we were able to grow as a team, as people, as leaders, 
um, throughout the season. I think that kind of showed after the game because, you know, guys weren't throwing their helmets, pouting about losing. I think they kind of just understood that the time came and that they need to embrace the moment. And, you know, they can't just like pout about every little thing. And I think being able to kind of embrace each other and notice that like this was our last time to kind of be together. You know, although you don't want that feeling after a game, it's, it's a special moment that you'll uh, remember forever. week stretch that we had following that, following really the Kokomo week, was probably the most fun I've ever had coaching. Because we didn't have to coach effort, we didn't have to coach attitudes, there wasn't any unselfishness, you guys just practiced freaking hard. Seriously, and, and you did. And, and I've, I've never seen that level of effort for that duration of time. And again, that's a testament to our seniors. But the lessons you've learned are going to prepare you to be a man. The lessons you learn are going to prepare you to be a man, prepare you to be a great dad, a great husband. You're going to be successful in life. I promise you that. Seniors, thank you. I just want to say that I've been so proud of every last one of you. Who I am. We love you, man. We love you, man. I don't know what you guys did. Wow, this is another fun fact. <laughs> Yeah, I'm proud of all of you. I'm going to see you soon, yes. But I'm coming back next year. I'm coming back. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely coming back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give him love right now. Hey, everybody give him love. Thank you, man. Let's go. Gonna break on our seniors. Before the tears start coming in, you feel me? I don't know, man. Thank you guys. That's all I, I mean the best four years of my life. Never regret anything I did. Went by, they'll tell you like everybody else that walks up here is going to tell you, it goes by in the blink of an eye. I grew up in this program um, and it's hard to finally leave. You guys don't realize how good you guys have it. Your coaches care about you so much. They want to see you succeed so much in life. And your teammates, I know we formed a brotherhood this year. I could just tell on and off the field. I enjoyed it every, one, every minute of it. Probably wish I could have another year. Same with all these seniors with me. It was fun playing with y'all, my brother. Man, I'm almost gonna keep it short and sweet. Thank y'all again. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>
record this way. Hey, that's a wrap.